Hey guys, my in-laws just dropped off my wife's old ColecoVision that she used to play with as a kid. And they brought along about 60 games for it and the old Atari adapter. And I'm really excited to get this thing set up and revisit some of these old games. Yes! I have such great memories of playing these old games with my buddies when I was a little kid. Some of my favorites were like Zaxxon and River Raid, maybe playing the tank games on combat. Uh, I spent hours playing Pitfall with my buddies or Frogger. Uh, I've got such great memories of these games and I was really excited to get this system all set up. But I don't know if the games are really as cool as I remembered them to be. I don't know if I would say that this system is really aged like fine wine. It might be more like fine milk. So join me on this nostalgic trip to see if these games are best left in the past, and welcome back to the nostalgic neighborhood. I'm pretty sure that most of us remember playing the old Atari 2600 games back in the day. Uh, most of my friends, a lot of people had Ataris. Not so many people had ColecoVisions. I think there was only maybe one or two kids in my neighborhood who had them. Uh, the ColecoVision came out a couple years after Atari. It was released around 1982 or so, and that meant that its graphics chip and processing was just slightly better than Atari, and the games were just a little bit more uh, like the arcade version. And like I said earlier, this was my wife, their family a system, her brother and sister used to play that. And uh, it's really cool. They preserved it all pretty well. They had a whole bunch of games. But the cool thing is that they had this expansion module number one that basically allowed you to plug this into the ColecoVision and then you could put Atari games directly into it and then play Atari games on the ColecoVision. So that way you had uh, access to both libraries. And so they had, yeah, like 60 games. My father-in-law was telling me that towards the end of the era, probably 83 or 84 or so, that he was able to get some of these games at like Target on clearance for like 50 cents. And they would have uh, rebates for like three bucks. And he said he got like 12 or 15 games like that where he basically got it for free and they paid him a little bit back in the rebate. But um, yeah, the Atari adapter is really cool. But I think we'll focus on some of these ColecoVision games today. One of the cool things about this setup is that they kept most of the original documents that came packaged with the system. And this little uh, pamphlet here is really cool. It stood out to me the most. And as you kind of flip through, it goes through and shows some of the ColecoVision games that you could purchase alongside the original arcade uh, game that you'd go to the arcade and obviously throw quarters in and play. There's so many great classics here that I remember, like Zaxxon and Qbert, uh, Frogger, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Pitfall, River Raid, Mousetrap. This looping game is really fun. We've got some Star Wars games, uh, Ladybug. Uh, it goes on and on. Some real classics here. This is kind of like the Netflix of the 80s. And then getting this hooked up to a modern 4K television was a little bit confusing. It's kind of funny the hoops you have to jump through. So the original system sends its signal out through one cable. You have to put that into a VCR. The VCR can convert it into the composite, those old red, uh, white, and yellow cables. And then I've got that running into this old stereo receiver that will up convert that into a 1080p and output it through HDMI and then that gets upscaled to the 4K TV. So it's kind of funny. I assume that's why it's kind of got some artifacts and kind of just f fuzziness, but it is really cool to see these old blocky, old pixelated games back on a modern TV again. But here's the thing, as much as I really love these games and they bring back some great memories, I have to admit something, and that's that they really haven't aged that well. Compared to the games that we're used to today, or even the games that we played on the NES back in the later 80s, these games just really aren't that great. They're just kind of rough. But you know what? That's okay. The memories that these games hold and the nostalgia that they evoke, that's pretty priceless. And while they may not hold up to modern gaming standards, they represent an incredible time in our history. And just look at these brochures. They've got some really awesome artwork, some really cool colors, and they really just represent a tangible part of history from the 80s. So do these games belong in the past? In some ways, yes, but I really wouldn't want them any other way. They're a part of who we are and they're part of our collective gaming heritage and there's something really wonderful about that. Thanks for joining me on this journey back into the golden age of gaming and it's always a pleasure to have you here on the Nostalgic Neighborhood. So until next time, let's game on.